Hello there and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be about how to start Savage Raiding. Raiding in general gives you some of the most exciting challenges and biggest rewards available in the game. Whether it's best in slot gear known as BIS or mounts you can show off as a sign of completing a raid tier or specific primal fight. If any of these things interest you or you're a veteran player ready to go, allow me to help you get started. First things first, your character must have a certain item level requirement known as eye level. You can check the duty finder to see what minimum eye level requirement is needed for the fight. The reason eye level is important is because of the amount of damage that goes out during the fight and also the amount of damage that needs to be dealt to the boss in order to clear. The higher the eye level means you have a higher chance of surviving and also dealing more damage, making the fight a little easier to complete. In order to check what your current eye level is, which is an averaged amount based on your equipped gear, open your character window and take a look at the number on the top right of your gear set. If you do not meet the minimum requirements, I'll explain some ways to acquire new gear. Now, there are a few ways to get a starter set of gear for Savage Raiding. If you've already completed the normal difficulty of raids, you can most likely use that gear plus any gear you've collected from more recent level cap dungeons. You may also purchase gear with the expansion's current tombstones. Since we are in Shadowbringers patch 5.45, you can use weekly capped tomes of Revelation to purchase the Crypt Lurkers gear set with an item level of 520. In order to acquire these pieces, you must be diligent in capping your weekly Revelation tomes at 450 per week. You can also craft or use the market board to purchase the Exarchic set with an item level of 510. 10. Purchasing the Exarchic set is probably the fastest and easiest way to get Savage Ready gear, so I highly recommend it. If you are watching this after patch 5.45, you can still refer to what tome and crafted gear is currently available to purchase. When you start Savage Raiding, you can begin to replace and augment your tome gear to get your best in slot. I recommend joining the Balance Discord and checking out the Ock Morning website to take advantage of the vast resources they offer, including job-specific guides, rotations, gear sets, and materia melds. I will link their websites in the description below. When you have an idea on what your opener and rotation should look like, head to the Stone Sky Sea Trials found outside of Yulemore in Calusia. You must first unlock this by completing the quest Yet Another striking opportunity. Once you enter, you'll be teleported to a dummy giving you a set time to defeat it. These dummies will have different HP amounts that correlate to the DPS required in various savage encounters. The amount of DPS required will also change depending on what role you enter as, since not all jobs can output high amounts of DPS. And yes, healers, you must assist in DPSing when you are not healing. It's very important to know how to balance when to heal and when to DPS. Even if you don't make the time requirements, if you're just about to defeat it, then that means you should have enough DPS for the real deal and your rotation is solid. I really recommend spending a good chunk of time learning your rotation because it's one less thing to focus on. If you're staring at your hotbar the entire time, you won't see what's happening in the fight and will most likely die to missing an important mechanic. Remember, you must be able to balance DPSing and also dancing around the boss in order to clear the encounter. When you feel confident enough to begin raiding, take a look at what to expect in the fight you will be attempting. Having an idea of what will be happening in the encounter will give you a lot more confidence in doing mechanics. It's also a requirement to have reviewed a guide in most learning parties through the party finder. There are lots of fantastic content creators who make detailed and very helpful guides as new fights come out. There are either video guides or just text guides to learn and review the encounter's mechanics. I recommend either MTQ Capture or Mr. Happy 1227 for guides. You can also look up some POV videos of players in your specific job to see how they manage the encounter. Plenty of players record and upload their clears on various jobs 
or live stream their progression with statics or party finders. You can get a pretty good idea of when DPS burst windows happen, preparing your heals for AoE damage, or popping important cooldowns to stay alive. If you choose to progress blindly, then you can skip reviewing beforehand. Food and potions are very important to have on hand and you should always be utilizing every advantage you can get to increase your damage and stats. The proper food should be used at all times, whereas potions can be used when you decide it's appropriate. You can hold off on using any potions until your group is prepared to clear or you need the extra DPS to make it to a transition. The extra DPS usually won't do much if your group has to reset the encounter multiple times and using potions can be very costly. Food is mostly important because it can give you extra health to help you survive mechanics. In order to see which specific food is required for your job and build, take a look at the gear set you've chosen through the Balance Discord. Specific gear sets require different food to accompany them, so make sure you're using the right one. Potions, however, are based on your job's main stat. For myself as an astro or any healer, it would be a tincture of mind. Tanks will most likely use a tincture of strength, and DPS jobs will be either using tinctures of dexterity, intelligence, or strength. Even if you're currently in a static, using the party finder is very useful to practice encounters when you have free time. I personally have cleared all Savage tiers this expansion using Party Finder exclusively. The only downside to Party Finder is the varying skill levels of players you will be grouped with. It definitely requires a lot more patience and time since you're constantly playing with different groups of people, but you will also improve your skill and flexibility overall. You can also make new friends and possibly find a static group along your journey to clearing encounters. When you're looking for a party to learn a fight, check to see if the party has a green practice label. They will also note what part of the fight and strats they are using in the description. Depending on what phase or mechanic of the encounter you are learning, try to find a group that is progressing around the same place. There are plenty of learning parties that also like to attempt encounters blind, but most will ask that you review the mechanics prior to joining to save time. If you've reached in rage and have enough confidence that you can perform all the mechanics consistently, start looking for a party with a light blue duty complete label. At this point, everyone should be able to deal enough damage and perform all the mechanics correctly to clear the encounter. Although, most of the time you will still wipe and may have to join a different party. There's a lot of trial and error when finding the right group, but you will eventually clear it nonetheless. Once you have cleared the encounter, you may only receive the chance to get loot once a week. The lockout resets every Tuesday at 1am PST and you will have another opportunity to roll for loot. At this point, you can join the gold, duty complete, and loot labeled parties, which means only players who have successfully completed the encounter can join this group. It makes things quite a bit easier now that you're grouped up with more experienced players in that specific encounter and hopefully will spend less time trying to clear. Now, I'd like to talk about the term trap parties. These parties are usually intended to be for more experienced players to clear the content and move on. However, a lot of these groups end up not being able to make it past the first few mechanics of the encounter. This can also apply to any farm parties for loot or mounts and duty complete parties that make you question if everyone knows what they're doing. Of course, trap parties aren't an intended thing and unfortunately you'll run into your fair share of them. If you feel like the group doesn't match what was advertised, feel free to leave and search for a new group. This is the final section of my guide and ultimately the most important one. Your mentality while learning and clearing encounters is extremely important. I think the most common thing players feel about savage raiding is anxiety and a lack of confidence in their performance compared to other players. Nobody starts off playing like a pro. We all have different skill levels and learn things at a different pace and that's completely okay. 
Experienced players also have trouble with some mechanics, make mistakes, and will cause wipes in groups too. You should enter every encounter knowing you will wipe a crap ton of times and that everyone will be making mistakes here and there, especially when you are all learning together. Be honest about your abilities and join groups that are progressing in the same phase of the fight as you. Being patient is also extremely important, not just with other players, but yourself. These fights are not intended to be easy and quickly cleared, so give yourself and others a break and don't get too upset. That will only ruin your own experience in the game. If you find yourself getting too emotional and letting it affect your performance, then it's okay to take a break and recollect your thoughts rather than continuing on and letting it upset you further. Remember, this is a game and we're all here to have fun at the end of the day, so don't let it stress you out more than it should. If you are looking for a static, try to find a group of people that share the same objectives and mindset of raiding as you do. Whether it's a very casual and fun group with no timeline to clear encounters, or a more hardcore and serious group looking to progress at a faster pace, there's going to be a lot of hit and misses with groups and problems may occur. But when once you find the right group, you'll enjoy the experience of raiding much more because the people who surround you make things better. If you're a bit of a lone wolf or cannot adhere to a set schedule, Party Finder will be your best friend since you can choose when to raid and for however long you wish. I also get a lot of doubts and questions about being able to clear and gear yourself to best in slot using Party Finder. Again, I have exclusively geared myself through Party Finder and I felt absolutely no need to find a static. As long as you're determined to clear the encounters, you will get geared at some point. So don't let not having a static deter you. Again, even if you're in a static, it's recommended you practice as much as possible so you can come back confident and ready to clear with your own group. So, have I prepared you for the exciting adventures of Savage Raiding? I hope this video gives you the confidence and information to give it a try too. Endgame Raiding is easily my favorite thing to do in every MMORPG, and Final Fantasy XIV offers the best raiding content available. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome again! My name is Midna. I'm a Final Fantasy XIV and variety streamer on Twitch. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. You can also say hi to me while I'm live on twitch.tv forward slash midnababy and check out some additional raid content. 